are live. Welcome to Lord of the Hills Lutheran Church. We're so glad that you're here with us. And whether you're with us in Facebook, we'd love to hear your comments. Um, here with us in Zoom, or you're watching this at a later time, you are welcome here. We are in this together. Um, you're always welcome to share with us your prayer requests. And we hope as we begin this worship with our prelude, it's a time for you to be here and no place else. Welcome to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us together confess our sin in this moment of silence. God, our provider. Help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from our ways and the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. 
you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We invite you to join in singing along in our opening hymn. Let us pray. Oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need through Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Listen for the word of the Lord. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are, not, we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Word of God, word of life. 
Thanks be to God. So for our children's message, um, if you're looking at that graphic, um, it might bring to mind that expression is home is where the heart is. So I'm going to invite you to just take a moment. And when you hear the word home, if you're um, with us while this is happening, either in Facebook Live or here in Zoom, I invite you to put in the chat, what's a word you associate with home? What does home mean to you? I'm going to give you a minute to add to the chat or add comments on Facebook. Yep, love, snuggles, peace. Yep, family. Those are great answers. Comfort. Mm -hmm. Now, some of you, home cooking. Yes, that's a great one. Safety, sanctuary. Now, some people might not know this about me. And you each know about yourselves. Um, I'm an outgoing person. The reality is I'm a homebody. I like to be at home. I like to be safe. Some of those words you heard, comfortable, feel secure. I like things in my environment to be really calm. We got to see a, a, a dog who was joining us in worship and I love to be at home with my dogs. But we're gonna hear um, a sermon um, that's gonna invite us though, instead of thinking about home is where the heart is, I want you to hear this. We're gonna practice it together, thinking about this. To make your heart the home for God. To make your heart the place where you can be at home. Because like a turtle with a shell who always carries their home with them, or the hermit crab who has their home, like lives in their home and they move with it. When we allow our hearts to be our homes also, and our hearts to be the home for God, what we get to do is have God with us all the time. So that's the simple form for, that we're going to keep reminding one another and our children is when someone asks, where does God live? Children ask great questions. You're going to be like right here in our hearts, in each of our hearts, because actually God created our hearts and created our hearts to love God. So we're gonna listen in this mustard seed parable that Jesus speaks in just a moment in our gospel reading about how sometimes it's the smallest of things. So maybe you're in a place where you feel the opposite of some of those things at times than home. Maybe you feel insecure or uncomfortable or lonely. I want you to remember that just like the turtle who has the shell, God's with you because God's in your heart all the time. I invite you now in the manner of our children to pray with me as we take our hands and put them together. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you. Good and gracious God, we, we thank, thank you. you for giving us lives. For giving us lives. Designed to love you designed to love you help us have hearts help us have hearts that are open to you that are open to you and feel your love and feel your love in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray amen amen i invite you now to hear the holy gospel according to mark the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head, but when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? 
It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Make in us new creations. Bring forth a new word. Let that mustard seed sized faith in us grow and flourish. Help us to trust that you live in us. That your word is for us and that in this time, place, and moment, you are speaking to us with the words of eternal life. We boldly ask this because we do so in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So maybe what we need is a mustard seed-sized sermon. Itty bitty. From which then this one itty bitty little seed, you can let it be planted into your heart to flourish. But often preachers have lots to say. I'm going to work to keep it really simple. That's actually for me for the summer of 2021, my theme. It's the keep it simple summer. Jesus often spoke to his disciples in parables. They seemed complicated at times, and there was, though, also a simplicity on the other side of the complexity. I think it's part of why often people are drawn to children's messages. So for a moment, let's go back there. It's not only that home is where the heart is. <clears throat> I want you to think about the home of God being in your heart. Not that it has to just be all about you or so personalized that, you know, it's captured, but that it starts there in that deep seat of emotion, in the deep place of feeling loved, comforted. And this key word, belonging. Often we exchange the word of belonging with belongings. Belonging to God is about being deeply connected. Take this message. You belong to God. The God's heart is so expansive and has so much room that from the heart of God comes this creation in which we live from the heart of God, each one of us is created, unique, particular individual with a universal love. Many things can be true at the same time. Both that each of us is uniquely and beautifully made and that also we are all made in God's image. Years ago, an intern at a congregation I served preached on this text of mustard seed-sized faith. Part of why I remember her sermon is she made all these bookmarks for us with little mustard seeds. And she talked about how often it was even just the smallest of a change or a word, or maybe even a glance or a touch could have a huge difference. God's love is expansive and we often experience it in the smallest of ways.
this past week, many of you know that I traveled back from Texas. Wow, it was a month. But it was a month where often I deeply missed my home. Because as I said in my children's message, I really am a homebody. I like my creature comforts. And I knew it was important to be away from those things so that my heart would be available to my daughter. But God also used it as an opportunity for my heart to expand. Whew, sometimes it felt like it might explode. But I'm so grateful for the practices that we guide and lead one another in of reading scripture, praying together, the prayers that so many people were offering up for me, the kind words, the notes, the small gifts and remembrances, they make a difference. Walk by faith. That's what Paul is instructing the church at Corinth. Walking by faith is actually a heart walk, a faith walk, a trust walk. And we let love lead us. And sometimes it's the smallest of steps, just those little baby steps. So this week, Here's what I want to invite and encourage you to consider. One breath at a time. One moment at a time. When you're feeling the opposite, because you know those opposite feelings of feeling at home, how might you describe that? I feel out of sorts. I feel like I don't belong. I'm in over my head. These are all the things I say when I'm feeling way outside my comfort zone, because often home is the place we're comfortable. And in those moments of overwhelm or fatigue or it's so hot or things aren't the way you're that you thought they were going to go, this is what I want to invite you to do. Put your hands on your heart. Maybe you can do that with me right now. Put your hands on your heart and let that action be the beginning of this prayer. <sighs> You didn't hear any words, did you? Because that breath is the breath of life. Take it with me, with your hands over your heart. The spirit is the breath of life. There is absolutely no place to be that God is not. Your heart God is there. Your lungs are filled with the breath of the spirit. So when you need that pause, you don't need any words. See, it's really mustard seed sized. It's a practice. It's a hand over your heart and a deep breath. Amen.
we take this time in our worship service to practice both a moment of sacred silence, but also to recount those times in this past week when we've seen God alive and at work in our lives and in the world. Earlier today, Thomas shared with me this great video he took. Look, look at that tree. It's there, it's growing. We invite you to share your God sightings um, in the chat with all of us. Um, and we invite and encourage you to share them all week long um, with other people. Um, for those who are here with us um, in Zoom, um, we shared earlier that if you want to share your God sighting, if you indicate that to us, if you want to say something on screen, we'd love to hear you. Um, and we will highlight your video and invite you to unmute. But take a moment here. Enjoy the beauty of God's creation. And um, we'll invite um, those who are sharing a God sighting um, to do so. So we're going to spotlight Dan and invite him to make, to share a God sighting. Try it one more time. There you go. You're on, Dan. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, this week on Tuesday, as I was driving back from Texas, I got a phone call from my son. And he said, Dad, I just got into a car accident. And the car's totaled. And the first thing is, son, are you okay? And he said, yeah, I'm fine. Says, is anybody else hurt? Nobody was hurt. Well, I slept Wednesday. And then Thursday, I went and saw the car. And it is truly a miracle that that boy is alive. That man is alive. The car looked like a, you know, it was smashed from the front and back. And it was just, the windshield's broken. It's just in horrible shape. And, you know, and of course, it's, it didn't hit, on, hit me until then that God had my son. I was holding him in that accident. You know, and I'm, I'm completely grateful today for that. For the prayers and, and the, the will of God that spared me the agony of a son injured. So that was my God sighting, big time. Thank you, Dan. We always invite and encourage you to get used to these confessions of faith, of God alive and at work in the world, because you never know when it might be you who says something to a friend, to a neighbor, maybe even to a stranger. It's God's word that's alive and at work in the world. So we're going to keep practicing together, identifying when we see God alive and at work in the world and putting some words to it and sharing those stories. Thank you for the stories um, you share. And we're gonna um, do the installation of our church council members next. So at this, the following people were elected um, last Sunday at our semi-annual meeting to lead and serve among us. Andrea Wayand, Al Saunders, Bruce Molitoris, John Burks, Carlin Peterson, Alan Storm, Mark Shearer, Amy Fry, Becky Burris, Ricardo Lopez, and Myrna Blair. In baptism, each of them was claimed as God's very own, God's beloved. As followers of Jesus through God's word and in baptism, the meal we share in this community, each of them has been nurtured in faith. I invite them when they're here with us in Zoom, we have one of our um, council members here with us in Zoom, or when they'll be with us in person tomorrow or in Zoom, and so they can just add it to the chat to answer this question. Will you continue to follow Jesus as you serve and lead among us? If so, say or write, yes, with the help of God. St. Paul writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. 
There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability to, for particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. Each of these people has been elected to serve and lead on our church council. They are to see that the words and actions of this community of faith reflect Jesus, the one who calls us to follow him. They are to work together with other partners in ministry to see that the work of Christ is done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and in the world. They are to be diligent in their specific area of serving so that God who empowers is glorified. So for she who is here gathered, I wanna make sure that you know, we are so grateful for you as you will be an example of faith active in love to help maintain the life and harmony of Lord of the Hills Lutheran Church. You shine the light of Christ in the darkness of our world. So those of you who are gathered with us, either here on Facebook, maybe you're watching this later or you're here in Zoom, you're gonna to respond to. I'm gonna ask you if you are ready to accept and faithfully receive and support our elected leaders. And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all of us? If so, I invite you to say, you can say it out loud at home or add to the chat, yes, with the help of God. So for our sisters and brothers in Christ who've been elected to our church council, for the one who's here, are you ready to accept and faithfully carry out the duties you've been called to perform and receive the comfort, the support, and the encouragement of this congregation? If so, please respond with yes, with the help of God. I now declare all those who are here with us and we'll get the others later this in our other services to be installed council members of Lord of the Hills Lutheran Church. May God bless you as you strive to follow Jesus, leading and serving among us so that we will continue to share God's love in the world and be a light from this hill. Amen. We now want to acknowledge and thank those council members who um, are no longer on council, but who gave great service to us. Don Johnson, who served as president, Leslie Bruden, who served as representative for witness, Cindy Walmendorf, who served in small groups, and Joe Rogers, who served on stewardship. Thank you so much for your service. It makes a difference. Our worship now continues with the prayers of the people. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants, restore growth to places suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer, especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, this house of worship belongs to you. We give thanks and pray for our church musicians. We dedicate to you the joyful noise that comes from this place, the cries of children, the melody of voice and instruments, and the songs from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you are with us in every breath. 
you know our deepest desires, our greatest fears, our hopes, frailties, and all that is within us. Give us willingness to find our true home in the heart of your Son, Jesus our Lord, and grant us the comfort of the Holy Spirit as we now lift up the prayer concerns of our community. The family of Jim Crawford at his passing. Jenea, the newest member of the Hampton family. James Austin, Rico Montoya, Robert Wayan, Carol, Mike and Cheryl Shellhouse, Greg Nelson, Tony Hayes Jr., Michael Patterson, Chuck Grote, Andrew Ike, Andy Martinez, Jan Nupp, Sarah McCombs, Linda Krabenhoff, Judy Dionese, Carol Groves, Barry Amon, Mary Stagmuller, Jamie and Brian Fluger, Heather Harrington, Michael Bax, Teresa Quick and their families, Beth Engelking, the Lyons family, the Hunter Brown family, and Myrna's father, Bob. For these and those we now name are hold in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors in the faith who are now at home with you. We look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We invite you to share a sign of peace by writing something in the chat or in the comments on Facebook. And what we really want you to do is let's be peace together in the world. Woo, we feel each other's love and energy. Let's be that peace of Christ in the world. Throughout this uh, summer, we're gonna be talking about pieces in the puzzle. It's your piece in the puzzle and your support and care of this congregation, your work, your hearts, your hands, and your offerings that make ministry possible. Possible. So thanks for being a piece in the puzzle of that. We hope you now enjoy this special piece of music for our offertory.
Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. We join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to join in singing our closing hymn. Receive these words of blessing to walk with you this week as you trust that God lives in your heart. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. We invite you to take a moment to um, fill out the survey. Um, you should have received it in an email. Um, if you are here with us in Zoom, we'll add it to the chat. Um, also, we'd love to see your puzzle pictures. Um, so if you would send those throughout this summer um, to Thomas, um, we'll be adding them to our slideshow. We're gonna keep working on that theme of each of us being a unique particular piece of the puzzle um, that God has and needs and wants to use um, for the good of God's work in the world. So we'd love to see your um, picture, uh, pictures of puzzles. And we're gonna probably maybe do a puzzle exchange um, this summer too. So we invite you now to prepare um, what you have for communion. Jesus wanted his followers to be united and to remember that Jesus's love would be with them always. And so it was on the very night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven given for you. Take and eat. And again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this in remembrance of me. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation shed for you. Take and drink. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. You are the body of Christ. Go in peace to love, serve, and grow. Thanks be to God, and we will.